So in this installment, we're going to take a look at the normal force, or the force normal. And what we can see in our chart, just to orient ourselves, we've got our mechanics and our kinematics, our dynamics, our momentum, our energy, and our forces. And we are looking at the second case of different types of forces, force normal indicated with the red line there. So the normal force, or the normal, excuse me, is a line perpendicular to a surface. In this sense, it is a syn it's a synonym of an altitude. Now, the normal force, then, is any force that is perpendicular to the surface. Now, the normal force isn't a brand new kind of force. The term normal describes its geometry. And so that's just something important. It's not like, uh, like gravity or one of the fundamental forces. It's just describing the, the geometry. So let's take a look at the different cases that we see in physics. One of those is a normal force that would be perpendicular to the ground. So in that case, we have perpendicular, and it would be oriented that way. So perpendicular and oriented away from the ground. On an incline, it will also be perpendicular to the incline and oriented away. And when it's a wall, it would be perpendicular to the wall and oriented away. Now when it comes to curved surfaces, it's a little more complicated. We need first to draw a tangent line. And that is a line that touches the surface at only one point. So those are our tangent lines. And the tangent line would be perpendicular to that line. Perpendicular, perpendicular, and perpendicular. So all of those would be the force normal. And that's the way it works on a curved surface. But what we want to look at uh, a little more closely is the normal force on an inclined plane, this inclined relationship close up. So we saw above that our inclined plane, in this case, the inclination is zero degrees. So in this case, theta is zero degrees. And here we have this angle of inclination like so and perpendicular. Um, and so that angle is between is theta, zero is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to 90 degrees. And then we have the case where theta is 90 degrees like so. And so each of these is the force normal. So what we can say then is that as the angle of the incline increases, the force normal decreases. The force normal decreases. And so let's look at this a little bit more closely. The, the normal force is actually a force that opposes something pulling it into play. So if we go back up to the, we look at the ground here, if we draw the force of gravity like so as the weight the force normal is equal and opposite to the weight. Equal and opposite to the force of gravity. So we would say the acceleration is zero. That means the net force equals zero. And so these two must be equal and opposite. So normal in this case is equal and opposite to the weight. Well, in this next diagram, the weight is, remains in this direction. And gravity, the weight, gravity, the force of gravity, can be broken into two components. The component perpendicular and the component parallel, force of gravity parallel and the force of gravity perpendicular. And so we can see then if the force of gravity parallel is parallel to the inclined plane, 
then this angle here and this angle here are opposite or alternate interior angles are equal. They're parallel to each other. That makes this a 90 degree angle. It's drawn that way. So what that means then is that force of gravity parallel, perpendicular, excuse me, must be less, must be less than the force of gravity, the weight. Now the weight of this object is going to stay the same. If it's one object on the ground and then we incline it, the weight is going to be the same, the force of gravity. What's changing then is that part of gravity that's into the plane, that force of gravity parallel, which is less than the force of gravity, and the force of gravity perpendicular is equal to the force normal. So this and this are equal and opposite. So therefore, as we've increased this angle from zero to some angle greater than zero, what we can see is the normal force has decreased. And it's decreased because gravity stays in the same direction and normal opposes the component of gravity perpendicular to the surface, which itself has decreased because it's a leg of a right triangle whose hypotenuse is the force of gravity. Now, similar then, you can see as we increase theta more and more and more, the force of gravity perpendicular will get smaller and smaller and smaller until the weight and normal are perpendicular to each other, in which case the normal force is zero. So as the angle of the incline increases, the force normal decreases. And if we were to be more specific, so that's generally the relationship. If we're going to be more specific, the, F, the force normal decreases from Fg at zero degrees to zero at theta equals 90 degrees. So we've got force normal equal and opposite to the, the weight. And by the time we go to get to 90 degrees, the force normal equals zero. So how do we measure the normal force? The simple answer is it's by weighing or weight. We can use a scale a force sensor, a force plate, or a spring scale are all devices we can use to measure the normal force. So if we've got a scale here, we've got a weight in pounds, and we see we've got 126.4, and we'll do a little bit of an exercise here in uncertainty. This is a digital scale, and so the uncertainty is, is plus or minus 0 0.1 pounds. Because it's that decimal place, it could go up or down one. So we would say the weight is 126.4 plus or minus 0 0.1 pounds. We could use this scale here, which is an analog scale, which is half the increment. And if we look very closely here, we can see that uh, our scale goes by ones. So we could estimate uh, uh, a weight of, say, 170 75.6 pounds, but that would be plus or minus 0 0.5 pounds. So we'd say 175.6 plus or minus 0 0.5 pounds. Let me write that a little more cleanly. Now, if we were to do this in kilograms, we might say we get a mass that is 100, if we look at the scale, this goes by, in this case, 91, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 100. It goes by 0 0.5 kilogram. And it's an analog device. So it goes by 0.5s. So we can estimate up to half of that or plus or minus 0 0.25 kilograms. That's the first time we're seeing an odd number like this. So we could have a reading that might be, say, 96.8, and we would say plus or minus 0 0.25 kilograms. Um, but since this, we can only read to the 0.8, we're going to round to the 0.3, so we'd say 96.8 plus or minus 0 0.3 kilograms. And you notice... At first, that seems odd that like we're getting another decimal place because of that 0.25, so we should be able to have reduced our uncertainty in this case. And we have, actually. If this went by ones, 
then it would be plus or minus 0 0.5 kilograms. But we have reduced it to plus or minus 0.3, so we've reduced the uncertainty by a factor of about a half in doing that. So that's just how we would practice reading those and unsigning the uncertainty. A force plate is going to be some number of newtons, and it might give us 510 uh, 0.6 plus or minus 0 0.1 newtons. We'll get a digital readout and the device itself will tell us what that is. And if we look at this force probe, we have an uncertainty, uh, a different set of uncertainty, one where there's a resolution of plus or minus 10 newtons and this one where it's plus or minus 35 newtons. And so there's a different set of uh, scales we could use there. When we use spring scales, there's a widely divergent set of numbers here. And so some of them go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And others will go 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And others 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. And others would go 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. And this might be 0, 20, 40, 60, 80. And this might be 0, 50, 100, 150, 200. And so each of those would have a different uncertainty depending on the scaling of the device. So I just wanted to point out some different devices for measuring force or normal force. But specifically, and this is important, if you're dealing with a problem or a situation trying to visualize what the normal force is, ask yourself, what would the scale read? And so, for example, if we are in an elevator, standing in an elevator, and we want to know what the normal force is, well, what would the scale read if we were in that elevator? And in later lessons, we're going to actually look at an elevator specifically in terms of what it would read when we're standing on it.